Hey everyone, Eric Van Hort here. I love franchising. I just got off the phone. Our talk fitness. Why most people that actually buy fitness franchises and own them never thought they would own a fitness franchise uh, if you would have told them a year ago. And um, so that was a really fun webinar. Um, if you want, just type webinar in the comments and I'll email it to you. If you ever just want to talk to me about franchising or uh, just go to talkwitheric.com. But uh, I'm going to show you a video here real quick of, uh, of uh, this. Uh, it was our podcast last night. And I just, uh, I'll show you. I asked him a question and it was basically, are you really sad that you quit corporate America? His response was priceless. I'll, I'll uh, show you real quick and then I'm going to come back and... Um, and comment on it. So there's me, but here's the here he is. You know, back in corporate America, were you having this much fun? No. <laughs> I couldn't. No. <laughs> I, mean, I could close them. I mean, I closed a, a deal with Caesars Entertainment for 32 of their casinos across the world for LED lighting. Uh, energy efficient lighting. And I remember the day that I closed it, but I also know exactly what I was going to make from it. And it was not a lot. I got some recognition from the CEO and Greg did too because he was part of that process. But no, my victories in the franchise world are so personal because everybody that supports me, I love and I've been with forever. So I just, the biggest thing I want to do is tell them when I can send them distribution checks. And that makes me super happy. So here's the other thing. Um, uh, that was uh, Felipe um, Marquez, and I did just a fantastic interview with him. He's given his, um, he's got a lot of investors, not a lot, he's got some major investors. And he's given his uh, managers equity in his company. You guys are going to find this as a fascinating interview. But what I just, you know, I was I was interviewing him, and I just saw this smile on his face as he was just before this. He was talking about the tough times, the things that are really really hard. He's like the struggle, the grind, all of the stuff. And then he, uh, I, I asked him that question. I'm like, man, it looks like you're having a lot of fun, you know. And he said, I said, do you miss corporate America? No. And then obviously, you know, none of this was planned. And he like remembers like one of the, probably the high points in corporate America where he closed this big deal, and it was nothing compared to what he gets to do now. Now he's on the other side of that, paying his employees, giving his his employees equity, paying back his investors, and that's a big win, much bigger win than a little bonus in corporate America for closing a big deal for a big company. So uh, if you think about uh, Stuff like this, if it's on your mind, like, I wonder if that could be me. You know, I have corporate America all the time, and, and I just don't know if I can do it. If you're a micromanager, you're probably not not meant to own a business. Um, you need about hundred grand in cash to be able to get into a lot of these businesses, too. But if you have hundred grand cash, you're not a micromanager, you're really good at operations, or you're good at marketing, uh, or sales, those are probably three... Um, categories or characteristics that I see as um, you know might might want to look at franchising so outsource everything else outsource the accounting outsource the finance outsource the legal but if uh, that's you on this other stuff that's a strength of yours and you're not a micromanager check out uh, talkwithericcom love to have a conversation